Today we're going to look again at the My64 retro computer case, which we have here. In our last series of videos, we used an Odroid H2 Plus to fit into this case. What we're going to do today is we're going to fit an ITX board into this one. I've already made some modifications to the case. I've replaced the original power switch with a Mod My Toys Vandalproof power switch, which was recycled from a previous build. Inside the case, we have a frame to hold either an SSD or a hard disk. We also have a little media card in here that I'm going to keep in place. I could replace this with an additional ventilation slot. I'm going to leave this card in place because I want to make use of its facilities. In the Odoid version of this, we mounted a power supply in the main case. But we're going to run this one with a power brick because with the ITX board in place, there won't be room for an internal power supply. So what we're going to fit inside this case is one of these. This is a passively cooled ITX board. Now this board takes two SODEM slots for memory cards on which we're going to fit two 4 gigabyte cards. It has an additional PCIe slot which we're not going to be using in this case. And we're going to be powering it via a Pico style power supply. So we have a look to see how this actually fits in to the case itself. Now this is where our board is going to fit. There we have a board, quite secure. Now we have a two four gigabyte memory cards to fit in. Card number one's in place. As room within this case is fairly limited, the Pico style power supply we're going to fit inside here has to be of a limited height to ensure it won't fill the sloping keyboard. So we have now fitted a small Pico style power supply into the power slot. Now this takes its power from an external brick. So we're going to run this cable through a hole we'll cut in the side here to provide mains power to the unit. And we will fit the cooling fan in here in its predefined slot and run the cable over to here the CPU fan. This leaves our remaining power connector to the SATA power which we will fit into the mini slot going in over here. Now we have completed drilling the small hole in the side of the case to support the power inlet. And I've also removed the large hard disk cage. While very elegant, it does take up quite a lot of room and leaves no room for the future expansions I plan on this machine. I've used a couple of maker beam struts to actually mount two terabyte hard disk in this free space. Now connected to the SATA power and SATA data cables. Now all we need to do is to mount the cooling fan. Right, 
So a cooling fan in place. That's a keyboard connected, and all we need now is a power lead. So here we have the case all closed up and ready to be powered up for the first time and to have Windows installed on it. There is a small gap at the side, but we'll fill that in with a ventilation slot. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.